to another edition of the Stogie Review Video Review. And uh, as usual, I'm Walt, and I'm back again for yet another weekly cigar review. And uh, this time around, uh, just as I said last week, I am reviewing the Rocky Patel Edge Sumatra. And uh, there wasn't a ton of information that, that I could easily find online, which uh, I don't know, doesn't totally surprise me. Uh, being that it is a Rocky Patel cigar, and that there really isn't a whole lot of information on their website in regards to their products. Uh, what I was able to find by going through, you know, the the typical avenue of uh, RockyPatel.com, as in the manufacturer, uh, some of the retail, uh, the the retailers uh, have some information. Unfortunately, uh, Cigar Cyclopedia had, didn't have anything listed on their website about this. But uh, I was able to scrape together uh, a little bit of brand information, that, and that is that uh, the Rocky Patel Ed Sumatra is uh, blended by the famed Rocky Patel and the extremely well-known Nestor, Nestor Placentia. And uh, these are a limited production cigar, as, uh, and that's why you don't see them very often. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have uh, actually never seen one in any of my local shops. Uh, however, Ace was kind enough to send me some from our fan forums along with uh, some Don Lino Africas and uh, the Padilla Obsidians uh, a little while back. So, you know, once again, Ace, thank you very much. Now, uh, in, in generic terms, uh, the Edge line is advertised, quote, full, full, full uh, in terms of body. And it's aimed at, uh, and I quote, professional smokers only. Uh, these are the cigars that if you go into a cigar shop, You'll see uh, boxes of the Edge Maduro or, or uh, Edge Corojo, uh, especially missiles. Uh, they come in that box where they stand up. But uh, you always see the warning label on there, you know, uh, professional smokers only, whatever it may say. So uh, it's uh, behind the cigar, there's a lot of hype as far as the, the body's concerned. Now, the components of the cigar is, of course, a Sumatra wrapper, which uh, I think comes from Ecuador. Uh, there's a Nicaraguan binder and the filler is made up from Nicaragua, Honduras, and Panama. And as I mentioned, these are reasonably difficult to find. Uh, when they are available, you can pick them up for about $5 a single, uh, or you can pick them up uh, per tray of $100 for about $400 bucks if you go over to uh, SiriusCigars.com. Unfortunately, Sirius Cigars is out of both the single and the tray. And from what I see, these are available in two sizes, a Toro, uh, and that's what this is, a 52 by 6, as well as, or as a Torpedo, which is also a 52 by 6. So, with all that good stuff out of the way, uh, let's get started. Uh, first and foremost, the cigar's got a very bright little band on the foot, and uh, that is, I shouldn't say relatively new. Uh, originally, I don't think these, any of the Edge line came with anything on them. They were just completely naked cigars. And, uh, and now Rocky Patel is putting a band on the foot, uh, very similar to uh, Camacho's El Legendario, except for uh, the foot is exposed on the Rocky Patel and the El Legendario, there's a, there's a cover. And there's some controversy around that whole thing, but uh, I'll let you find that on the web. But at any rate, the, I've been trying playing with the band a little bit to try to get it to pop off, there we go. But. Uh, the first noticeable thing about the cigar is uh, its color as compared to the veins that are on the cigar. Now, the the wrapper is it's sort of like a caramel color, but the veins are a little darker, so they really pop, and you can see quite a few of them. Um, they're all over the wrapper. They feel like they may have been smoothed out before the wrapper was applied. Uh, there's not a whole lot of texture to it. When you kind of spin it, you don't feel the raised veins. The, uh, the three turns of the wrapper are, are easily visible. It looks like I have a tiny little spot that's raised. Uh, I have to keep an eye on that you know, as we're going along. It's, it's, you know, it's got about an average aroma to it. You know, it's not real distinct. At either the, either the, on the wrapper or on the foot. The, uh, the sheen is nice too. There's uh, quite a nice oily sheen on it. And overall, it feels pretty good. Uh, just kind of fumbling around with your hands. It, it's got sort of a, almost like a, a leather feel to it. You know, there is no mild grittiness. It's uh, it's relatively smooth. Uh, you get the occasional slight little lump from the from the vein, but aside from that, the cigar feels good. It's got uh, really not detecting any soft spots. A couple of tiny little hollow spots where I can push on <clears throat> on the wrapper, but you know it's. Not, uh, I don't know, maybe that's being a little anal, but in any case, uh, 
I'm going to cut it with my polio cutter. A little change of pace from uh, from the scissors. I'm trying to get used to the polio cutter again because uh, I want to review it soon, or, or at least uh, do a post about it. But uh, at any rate, it's a nice easy cut, and uh, just because I have one, I'm going to light my cigar with my Rocky Patel tabletop torch, which uh, I got a while back when I bought a, a vintage 90 or a 92 sampler from Famous. I, can't, I got it for like five bucks. I don't think they make these anymore, but uh, it's a great little torch. But uh, at any rate, sit tight. I'll be back, we'll get started on the, the first third and uh, see how this goes. See if uh, that full, full, full or uh, quote professional smokers only, you know, is, uh, is a gimmick or, you know, if there's something behind it. comes down to how things are between me and you. All the outside voices speaking in turn. I nod my head and try to avoid the burn inside. Keeps your face from going away. Talking to myself about the bus stop. Thought I saw you once, but I guess not. So come on, baby. As you can see, I'm getting into the first third of my uh, my Rocky Patel, the Edge Sumatra, and uh, actually I've been at this for about 45 minutes, believe it or not. Uh, sm the cigar is smoking wonderfully. Uh, very nice slow burn to it. Uh, it's got a very light ash, compacted, firm, uh, really thin burn line. You know, I don't have any blistering. It's it's even. I mean. Uh, you know, if I were going to grade it on, on burning characteristics alone, I mean, and it's it's an A plus cigar. It's doing extremely well. Uh, I, I couldn't be happier, you know, in in that aspect of it. Um, you know, now that I'm in the cigar a little bit, uh, quick toast and light. I get, you know, I got everything evenly lit, burning well. Uh, the the draw is good. Um, there's just enough resistance to uh, to keep me from smoking too quickly. Uh, each puff, you know, is very generous with its smoke, and uh, and that smoke is uh, dense and heavy, very easy to pass through your sinuses, you know, do all that fun stuff. Uh, the body starts off, you know, right in that full range, just as advertised, and uh, the finish is very, very heavy and thick, and I mean, you can really just feel the heft, kind of, you know, on the palate. Uh, there's just uh, there's just a lot of oomph behind this cigar, but uh, you know, that's where. I think it, at least for me at this point in the first third, I think that's really overemphasized um, because I mean to be to put it bluntly and to be completely honest, I mean uh, it just tastes like a cigar. Um, and what I mean by that is there's uh, just a natural tobacco sweetness with uh, nothing else coming out of it. I mean it's just uh, it, it everything is just it, it's all a body. I mean there, there's just uh, I just think it's overemphasized. It's unbalanced as far as you know complexities and flavors go, as compared to the body. I mean, it's every puff. I'm just getting a full-bodied cigar. You know, there, there's really no finesse to it. And uh, I'm the type of smoker that loves a full-bodied cigar as long as it's smooth, which this cigar is, and it, and it has nice, rich flavors. But uh, while it does have a nice, rich flavor of a, of a natural tobacco, you know, sort of sweetness to it. You know, I, I'm really not getting anything out of it that's kind of over the top. I mean, it's just uh, it's just average at this point. But you know, one thing to keep in mind is I am certainly not the person to be doing a Rocket Patel review, uh, and that that should definitely be Jerry doing it. But uh, but anyway, I said I was going to do it, and Ace was kind enough to send him to me, so I'm smoking it. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, I find this with a lot of Rocky Patel stuff. Um, I just don't have a taste for it. It's not saying it's a bad cigar. I mean, it's it's burning fantastically, and there's obviously a market for it. Uh, it's just unbalanced, in my opinion. It's just not up my alley. And uh, you know, a lot of his cigars seem that way to me, whether or not they're 
they're unbalanced in, in terms of too much strength or, or whatnot. Um, they just don't seem to do it for me. And and where we're at right now, a little over an inch into the cigar, it's just uh, it's not really doing anything for me. But you know, I've got a lot of cigar to go, and personally, I really prefer you know the final third of the cigar, you know, over the first third. I just think that the flavors really come through, and, and things become much more complex. So hang tight. I'll be back. We'll do the second third, and you know, hopefully, you know, the cigar really opens up. Uh, at this point, we're, we're just pretty flat. But uh, at any rate, listen to a little music, uh, courtesy of Podshow.com. Take a look at a few pictures, and I will be right back. second third here and you know the uh, the burning qualities of the cigar are very impressive um, you know the burn line is still very thin it's really nice and dark it's got a nice oily shine to it uh, I mean there's very very little waviness to it um, the only the only part of the cigar that gets kind of ugly points is the the ash at this point it's still very compact it's it's firm and tight but you know, every time I ash the cigar, what's happening is I'm getting like clumps of it coming out, and uh, it just makes for a rather ugly-looking ash. I mean, even waving it around, I'm not knocking the ash off. It's just uh, it just looks kind of deformed on the end of the cigar like that. Uh, the the resting smoke is about average. Uh, it fills the room with. A heavy room aroma, but it, it's, it doesn't seem to be offensive. Uh, it really isn't bothering me in the slightest. Uh, the draw is pretty much the same as it was earlier on. Uh, there's some resistance there that keeps me from, from smoking too quickly. But uh, it's not too much that I feel like I'm, I'm straining to get the volume of smoke that I want. And, uh, and the, the amount of drawing I'm doing on the cigar is providing a generous supply of smoke. And uh, just like before, it's very thick and just kind of lingers in the room. Now, uh, the, the most impressive part of the, of the construction is the burn rate. Um, I, I don't know, I looked at this cigar and I thought, eh, two and a half hours. But, you know, I'm, I'm in about an hour and a half, I, I still haven't hit the halfway point quite yet. And, uh, you know, I'm still going strong. I mean, I, this cigar is lasting a very long time, which is really nice. Uh, it tells me that the cigar is just jam-packed with you know the the right amount of tobacco to keep it burning nice and slow and cool but uh, I lost my train of thought there anyway you know it keeps it from burn it keeps it burning nice and slow and cool without uh, without getting overly hot or or any of that uh, bad stuff I uh, lost my train of thought maybe it'll come back to me but uh, at any rate uh, the body is still very much in the full range it has uh, progressively um, you know stepped up as as we've gone along uh, there isn't anything above full, you know. It's not like uh, nuclear or anything, but uh, you know, it's it's a pretty heavy cigar, and you really get that from the finish. You know, after you expel the smoke, you, you get this really heavy, thick feel in your mouth. Uh, it just lingers for a little while. Uh, eventually, it fades, and it's time to take another puff, and and you get it all over again. It's it's a real, it's like a firm push. It's it's just very thick, you know, and. Uh, it leaves a, sort of like a, a syrupy kind of texture in your mouth. 
So, I mean, if, this is certainly not for the mild body smoker in any way, shape, or form, or uh, it's not, I, I would say that uh, it's not going to be your cup of tea if you like uh, medium body cigars either. Uh, you know, you really need to prefer the full, you know, the upper echelon full, full bodied cigars, um, at least in my take. I mean, you know, it's very heavy. Um, one complaint that I'm having, which uh, I'm getting a little bit of a headache, and I think it has to do with the cigar. Uh, I don't know whether it's the, the amount of nicotine that's in it or, or what, but it, something's giving me a mild headache, and uh, I've smoked lots and lots of cigars, and I, you know, I can't recall ever really getting a headache from a cigar, but this one just seems to be doing it. Uh, in the flavor department, things are much, much better now uh, that I've progressed past that first third. Uh, that that sort of bland natural tobacco flavor is it really seems to develop into something more rich, and it's got a lot more depth and complexity now. And uh, I'm picking up like a, a secondary flavor that's sort of like a mild acidic sweetness, if, if that makes any sense whatsoever. And uh, the contrast is nice. It's th that little bit of uh, like a, a, an acidic taste. Uh, I don't know. It takes away from that, that really rich, heavy, full body flavor, I don't know, everything just kind of melds together fairly well and uh, I'm enjoying it at this point. So we went from thinking that it was nothing special, uh, bland or boring, uh, to, to enjoying it at this point. So we'll see what the final third has to entail or, you know, and we'll just uh, see how things go. So uh, take, take a look at some pictures, uh, listen to a little music. I'll be back. We'll do the final third, wrap things up, and I'll let you be on your way. Still plugging away on my my RP Edge Sumatra, and uh, I don't know. I am sort of got mixed feelings about it at this point. Uh, but before I get into that, the the body, I mean, it, it still progresses. I mean, uh, it it really doesn't let up from start to finish. Um, I'm getting down toward the end, and. Uh, you know, the body is just still building. Um, it is. It is definitely. It meets that full, full, full description. Um, and the finish is just as it was before. You know, it's very thick, thick on the mouth, on the tongue. Um, you know, almost like a sort of a molasses or syrupy kind of texture. You know, just really heavy. And uh, just like I said before, it, it lingers. Um, and, and I don't have a problem with that. You know, I, I like it when the flavors sort of linger a little while. It. Uh, Holds you over until the next puff. At least uh, that's that's just my take on it. You know, I, I like that that whole flavor and fullness in between uh, puffs. Um, I think that's where a lot of the more subtle flavors really come out for me. Um, you know, in between puffs like that, especially after a sip of water or something like that. You know, it really just sort of I don't know, just livens things up a little bit. But uh, the the base flavor is pretty much still is uh, pretty much the same. It has uh, a nice natural tobacco flavor that's very rich. It's still, you know, it gets richer and deeper as we go. And uh, I'm getting a, a woody and sort of a nutty flavor and uh, that mild acidic sweetness is still there. And it does a good job of, of contrasting the cigar. Uh, my burn line is beginning to get a little wavy. Uh, ash is still very light in color. You know, it's very compact. You know, it's not flaking or anything like that. Uh, I'm beyond that point where you know, I was getting like chunks breaking off, and uh, the cigar looks very neat once again. Uh, resting smoke is about average. Uh, draw is still the same. You know, there's a little bit of resistance there, but again, it, it's not too much to, to make you work to get the smoke. And uh, it, you know, you still get a, a generous supply. And just as I said before, you know, the smoke is very dense. Uh, it just lingers in the room. It, uh, it's easy to get through your sinuses. 
And uh, even though the cigar is very full, uh, it's not so bad going through your sinuses. You know, like some of the cigars, they, they really sting. But, uh, you know, this one's smooth, smooth going through, but, you know, no, no harshness or anything like that uh, through the sinuses. Now, on the palate, on the other hand, uh, the cigar is beginning to get harsh on me. Um, I, I certainly don't see myself smoking this down with a, down to the nub with a toothpick or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to be putting it out shortly, actually. Um, and I've had that with every edge I've had so far. Uh, the Corojo, Maduro, and now the Sumatra. Um, when you get down, you know, down toward the end parts, you know, the part that I really like of the cigar, uh, it just picks up a lot of harshness. And I don't know whether it's the nicotine or, or whether it's just, I don't know, it's just too much Lajero or something in the end. Uh, it, just, it, it just begins to get harsh and becomes an irritant, almost like a mild chemical flavor. Uh, you know, it's, it's not very good. You know, it's still very much smokable at this point. I mean, it's, it's, I don't have the urge to toss it, but uh, it is there, and it is getting it, it's getting worse as I go. And as I mentioned, it, it just seems to be a common trait with the with the edge cigars. Now, um, this may be where that for professionals only quote kind of comes in at. Um, you know, I, I, for me, it's just. It's too much, uh, and it's not like too full or anything. It's there's too much strength as far as you know the heaviness and the, the nicotine goes uh, in comparison to the nuances in the flavor. I, I really like you know full strong cigars, you know very heavy full bodied cigars, but um, my preference is really toward those really full bodied cigars that have uh, tremendous flavor. And this one, you know, it starts off. At, you know, pretty flat. Uh, you know, it develops a nice flavor, and then once you get down into this point, it, it becomes harsher and harsher, and that flavor just sort of goes away. So I'm only smoking it for the middle point, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, uh, at least for my preference. Now, if you belong to the Rocky Patel fan club or the, the Rocky Patel cult, uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to love this cigar because uh, I, I think it's very similar to other cigars that he makes in, in that they they don't deviate far from like a center ground. Uh, they all have sort of the same, uh, I don't know, core to them. And and that's the part of the cigar, the, the Rocky Patel cigars that I don't really care for. They all have, they all share this similarity and it just doesn't do it for me. Now there are some cigars uh, from Rocky Patel that I like. The Now, now that's where I'm going to contradict myself. Now the Edge Light, I don't think really gets harsh toward the end. You know, I like that cigar. I also like the Rocky Patel Connecticut, uh, which isn't an edge, but uh, you know I, I like the edge light. And come to think of it, I don't get you know harshness toward the end of that. But you know the standard full-bodied edge is the, the one I, I get harshness with, and I don't really care for. Now, as I mentioned, that you know there are other cigars that I like, and the Rocky Patel Sun Grown is one of them. You know I really like that cigar as well. I, I don't really care for the vintage line. Um, you know, there's just very few Rocky Patel cigars I like, and I think those cigars that I do like are the ones that kind of deviate from the norm. But anyway, at any rate, uh, I've got a little bit more cigar to smoke. Uh, again, I'm certainly not going to be smoking this down to the toothpick. It's just getting get way too harsh. But uh, next week I'll be smoking the uh, what is that? The Gesta Ray Sun Grown. I think it's the Cortez. Comes in a glass too very nice presentation. I got tons of information on the cigar, which is very nice. I got, a, I found a whole, or I got a whole write-up, so um, I'm interested in smoking that cigar. It's been quite a while since I had it. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy sun growing wrappers. Now, the twist is that uh, I'm not a big fan of Dominican tobacco, but you know, I really am interested to see where this one goes because there are, you know, a handful of Dominican cigars that I really like. So, so you never know with uh, with this the way the cigars are, you know, just because they're from the Dominican Republic really doesn't mean anything. It just means that, you know, they're going to share a similarity and we'll see how the blend goes, whether it falls on the, the, the overly salty sort of uh, savory side or if it goes in another direction. So, at any rate, that is the Rocky Patel Edge Sumatra review. So, uh, until next week, happy smoking.